Okay, boys, um, a second section to help you do 6E. So this is continuation of 6E. Very short little bit on the function x to the power of a third. Um, you have done x to the power of a half before. That was the square root graph. i just show you this graph above when you did x to the power of a half or the square root graph was that sideways parabola. Um, and we related that as the inverse of the x squared graph. And you can see that that diagram there gives you a little bit of a room revision about positive half of the x squared and how that uh, inverses to the positive, the top half of the sideways parabola, the square root graph, the x to the power of a half graph. So now we're going to do x to the power of a third. Very similar. On this graph here, in black, is the x cubed graph. That's this one here, the x cubed graph in black. You can see it going through naught, naught. You can see it going through 1, 1. You can see it going through minus 1, minus 1. Domain and range are R for that x cubed graph. Then over here on the right hand side, I found its inverse. How do you find an inverse? Well, you interchange x and y and then rearrange that to make y the subject. And we get the y equals x to the power of a third graph, or the cubed root of x graph. Now, because it's the inverse of x cubed, we can draw it using what we know about inverses. 1, inverses intersect on the line y equal x. So that's there at 1, 1, and there at 0, 0, and there at minus 1, minus 1. They intersect. And they also reflect in the line y equals x. So if the x cubed graph comes down here underneath, the x to the third graph will go correspondingly up there above. If the x cubed graph comes away there like that, the x to the third graph comes away there like that. You can see that that blue graph, well, it's now red because I wrote on it, but that blue graph, that x to the third graph, is the reflection of that x cubed graph and perhaps the hint to drawing it would be that instead of shooting up you actually go over like that imagine you're coming to a zero but it's a vertical zero gradient and then down like that so there's a vertical zero gradient there, whereas on the normal x cubed graph before, we had a horizontal zero gradient. So this is the graph of x to the third. And this work on inverses explains how you find it. You could pause this video to take some notes. We can move on to... Um, there's the, the graph of x to the third, domain r, range r, with a point of inflection here, with a zero but it's sort of a vertical zero if such a thing exists comes in flat vertically and then goes out like that so it's actually not a zero gradient it's a, an infinite gradient at that point of inflection here's an example x plus 8 to the power of a third minus 2 well we're going to translate that graph the x to the third graph exactly the same way this will translate, let me just work out those translations. Translate backwards 8, it will translate down 2. If I was to then draw that, backwards 8 down 2, I might come back down to there and say that that was backwards 8 and down 2. There's the point of inflection. Remember the graph is going somehow like that and somehow like that. So I need to now find x and y intercepts. Let's go over here and find the uh, y intercept by making x equal naught. y equals naught plus 8 to the third minus 2. y equals the cubed root of 8 minus 2. Well, cubed root of 8 is 2. That's 2 minus 2. So y equals 0. Turns out that goes through that point there. It's very steep.
as all cubic graphs are, shouldn't be surprised. Cubic graphs and cube root graphs are steep. Zero, zero. I would possibly draw that again with different um, scale to try and make it look a bit better. I don't need to calculate the x-intercept because it's going to be the same. But in the exercise, I'm sure you have to calculate the x-intercept a few times by making y equal naught and then uh, rearranging and probably cubing both sides would be my own. I'll do it. Naught equals x plus 8 to the th third minus 2. In this case, we'll take the 2 over the other side. And the technique would be to cube both sides and get 8 equals x plus 8. Because that cube root I cubed. Subtract the 8 over, you get a x equals 0. You get the same result. I just did that to show you the cube both sides technique just here. That's the end of uh, some short notes for um, the x to the third graph, and that will help you do the last two questions, question 3 and 4 in 6e. Good luck.